Hey Health Junkies, it's time for The Health Fix. Join your host doctor, Janine Krause, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krauss, and I've got Meredith Beard, my sidekick here today. And we're going to be looking at food and talking about what the heck is up with these labels and what's healthy, what's not, what's a scam, I don't know, the whole deal. Because I think one of the main questions I get in my office is how do I know what's on a label is legit or how do I even know what product to buy? There's so much out there, there's so many brands. So we've got some of the stuff that we've pillaged from my cabinet here, and it's good because my husband and I eat a little bit differently. He loves his uh, kitty food, and so I've got some great stuff, plus my dad was here a couple weeks ago, and so I got some leftovers from dad, so hey, sit down, enjoy the ride here, or uh, get walking or moving, whatever you're doing listening to this podcast, because we are going to jump in and start talking about food and what we've got. So, let's see here. What do we want to start with? Well, what I want to start with is scam. Because okay. that's the first thing that I thought of when you were talking. And thinking about the things that I didn't know I was being scammed with when, I was on, <laughs> when I'm on my road and journey to health and fitness. Mm-hmm. So, the first thing would be, in the beginning of my life, <laughs> I would eat what I have here, which is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Mm, it's an all-time favorite. One of my favorites. <laughs> one of my favorites. But then, when I became healthy, right... As I would start picking uh, cereal boxes that had things on it, like this here, uh, crispy cocoa roos, um, <laughs> which are fantastic. But um, I switched to eating, still eating cereal, but because it would say, you know, non-GMO, um, it's vegan, um, it's, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, well, then that's healthy. <laughs> but tell me about this being a scam. Well, we've got mom's best cereals, crispy cocoa rice here, folks. And then we've got cinnamon toast crunch next to it. Which, by the way, yeah, full disclosure, I love the shit out of some sister cinnamon toast crunch. My husband loves it more than me, and so I buy it for him. Um, willpower every day not to bust that sucker open. Well, and if I get cinnamon toast crunch now, mm-hmm. I just get the cinnamon toast crunch from the organic mm-hmm. kid aisle at the grocery store. So then it's okay, right? Well, yeah, because it says <laughs> gluten-free, no artificial flavors or preservatives no high fructose corn syrup no partially hydrogenated oil oh thank goodness but yes this is the crispy cocoa rice i'm reading because there's all these big signs on this mom's best i mean they already hooked you in with mom's best you're like oh mom's best must be better than my cinnamon toast crunch but yeah you know that's the big thing people do they'll they'll be like oh how can i swap out my cinnamon toast crunch for something that's quote natural Mm -hmm. quote vegan organic (laughs) high no high fructose corn syrup oh actually this even says that but yeah, it, it's really the same. Cereals, junk food. It should be preserved for junk food times because here's the real deal. Um, Meredith will tell you about what happens with her and Cinnamon Toast Crunch when she eats it. And I'll tell you a little bit about my crispy cocoa rice here that is, by the way, gluten-free, no artificial flavors or preservatives, no high fructose corn syrup, no partially hydrogenated oil. Is and it free trade? Oh my god, I think it is actually. And it's made with real cocoa. So like we've got all the Oh, and it's made with renewable energy. So shit, you should buy this cuz it's just amazing in and of itself. But folks, the ingredients. Number 1, rice. Okay? So it's rice. Um, sugar. My uh, puppy is commenting on what he thinks about things. Apologize for his little noise there. But we've got rice, we've got sugar as the second ingredient, coconut oil, and then we've got salt caramel color, natural flavor, reduced iron, and then we have zinc, zinc oxide to be particular. Now, when I'm looking at these ingredients and going, okay, the second ingredient is sugar. There's 26 grams of sugar in this. So when I eat this, I get a headache about a half hour after, and then I'm like grumpy pants, and like it gets real. Hmm. And, and that's with the artificial flavors or preservatives. Oh, sorry, no artificial flavors or preservatives. The no high fructose corn syrup, the gluten-free, and all of the different signs all over my box of Mom's Best Cereal here, which you would think because it's in the natural food section, you know, you're not going to feel bad or anything about it but then we look at the cinnamon toast crunch let's see we've got whole grain wheat 
sugar, second ingredient, rice flour is the third, canola oil, fructose, maltodextrin, dextrose. By the way, maltodextrin is corn, and dextrose is corn uh, sugar. Speaking of, that's the thing that I get confused about when I'm reading um, labels is that there's so many different names for things that aren't good for me. Uh-huh. And I may only know, like, I know fructose, corn syrup, don't eat that, but I didn't know that other name that you just said. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that's what's tricky for me with uh, labels. But also, because um, I just like interrupting you. Um, <laughs> no, that's awesome. <laughs> um, from the healthy cereal, quote unquote, to the cinnamon toast crunch. For me, what's really interesting is just all the key words that make me want to think that this is healthy just because there's large, like right on the front of the box, it's so huge about gluten-free, right? So yeah, it's like this huge bubble that like draws you in. It's like, oh my God, it's gluten-free. There's no calories. Yeah. And it's, it's healthy. Yeah. But then when I go to this box and I guess back to words, something that I've heard once is that the more words that are on a box, maybe I shouldn't be eating it. Mm -hmm. And then also, can I pronounce all the words? And also, do I know what they are? And as you're reading these, um, I couldn't pronounce them as well as you did. And I don't know what they are. So that's how come for me, when I first started getting healthy, I just quit eating stuff um, that was processed or in boxes because I couldn't pronounce what was in it and I didn't know what I was putting in my body. Absolutely 100% on there. Because the most important thing to be thinking about when you're looking at an ingredient label, yes. One, do you recognize all the names on there? Mm -hmm. Two, if you can't recognize all those names on there, then that's probably a bad choice because there's one, preservatives. um, Things like BHT is also in Cinnamon Toast Crunch. That's a stabilizer so that the Cinnamon Toast Crunch can be on a shelf for a year or more. um, Does that mean my intestines will be um, good for a year or more as well? Well, (laughs) Is that how it works? Oddly (laughs) enough, there was a study um, in Tennessee. They have this human project where, where people, they bury people after they die and people actually, you know, this is called like the human farm or something. I'll verify that, folks. But they're, they literally will bury people and see how long it takes for them to decompose. And we're starting to see that we're actually picking, pickling ourselves with a lot of these preservatives. Seriously. And when they, yeah, when they isolate what's like in the skin of these people, things like BHT in the cereal are showing up because they're preservatives. Yeah, so we're staying more preserved. We are staying pickled oh, and God. well into our uh, prime. Can I interrupt you again? Mm -hmm. So things like caramel color, you Mm -hmm. know, like when I read that, I think, what is that going to do to me? Caramel color. It's an artificial color. Number one (laughs) ingredient in Coca-Cola as well. Pepsi, that's that color that gives it that nice brown. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's not natural. So why would I want to eat caramel color? (laughs) Is there any reason why in which I'd want to eat caramel color? No. no. There's no nutritional value in caramel color. Yeah, but I become addicted to it, huh, if I start eating it. That's well, my assumption. That, <laughs> that and all the sugar that's in there. Because not, I mean, they're, they're labeling sugar in there, but they're also the maltodextrin and, and the, what was the other thing? I forget, now I'm looking at it. Maltodextrin and dextrose. I mean, that's sugar. Fructose, that's fruit sugar. You have three sugars after you already wrote sugar. And interestingly enough, their total carbohydrate is 25 grams per three-quarter cup. And in my fancy crispy cocoa rice of mom's best with all of its gluten-free and fair trade and all that, it's 26 grams. It's, mine's one gram higher, which is interesting. What's your in sugar? Terms, my actual sugars are 13, and yours are 9. That's so crazy. I don't even know. I don't know how that happens. And so here's, here's another point. My um, dogs have decided that they want to jump in on the podcast, too. They're super excited about sugar. Yes. They're, they're like, we are hopped up on sugar. Don't tell anybody. Um but the, the sugar component here, in my mind, goes, okay, we've got this, this issue with labeling here in the U.S. And you can, you can have 20% error of the label is off, can be off by 20%. So what you're looking at can, you know, the calories say it's 120 calories per three-quarters cup. It could actually be more calories per that three-quarters cup or it could be less calories the U.S. allows us to get away with that 20% margin of error. And so that's, that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. Um, And so it makes me wonder why maltodextrin, dextrin, and all those aren't showing up as grams of sugar. However, yeah, I don't know. It's almost like we need to, like, eat these and then see how bad of a sugar high we get. (laughs) Test our blood sugar after and see how fast it goes up. Ooh, I don't know if that's worth the mood change. No, not today. Not this day. Not this day. 
<laughs> not today. And so we have more cereal here. I kind of grabbed my hu- my husband's a cereal fanatic. I mean, we've got uh, some honey bunches of oats. Which, you've seen the commercials, you know, they've got four wholesome grains and nine essential vitamins and minerals. But they have, like, I don't know, Meredith, how many freaking ingredients are in there? That's like 15 to 20 ingredients. I don't even have enough time to count That's a lot. how many. And the letters are too small to fit it all in there. I didn't bring my glasses. <laughs> and so we're told, like, okay, honey bunches of oats. Honey, honey's healthy. Mm-hmm. Strawberries, this one has re- with real tasty strawberries yeah they had to add the real tasty and the confusing piece i think for a lot of people and back to this there's no i think no shaming no Mm -hmm. you know you i am wherever i'm at like i can honestly say back in the day because i love cereal and it's interesting that we brought cereal up as like the topic of the hour but um growing up cereal was kind of a big staple of my diet and um, when you see images like strawberries like as a kid and in my young teenagehood you think oh, I'm eating something healthy just based off of the packaging. I mean, I know we're all getting way more educated nowadays to know that that's not the truth. But uh, for me, um, thinking about all the sugar and stuff like that, like not realizing how it negatively affects my body, even in these healthy boxes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's crazy. I I mean, as a teenager, I think I've told this multiple times on this podcast, I used to eat a box of cereal a day because I thought like, oh, there's 1200 calories in my portions. And so I would eat a box of cereal a day because I was like so intent on trying to keep my calories in a certain (laughs) percentage. You know what's, when as you said about eating a box of cereal a day, one reason why I ate a lot of cereal as a kid was because one of my cousins, he was this amazing skateboarder, like fantastic. (laughs) And he um, built a ramp in his backyard and he had his own skate shop. He was privileged enough to, you know, to be able to have a skate shop. And he was in the most amazing shape. And I wasn't in the best shape as a teenage kid, but I saw what he ate. All he ate was cereal. Like he ate (laughs) cereal and skateboarded. And I'm like, oh, if I eat cereal every day, I'm going to be in really good shape. Not the case for my 11-year-old body. I think I was in the worst shape of my life eating cereal every day. Yeah. 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 Mm, But I guess what I wanted to bring up, because, you know, I'm like just random thoughts, but um, how much, not just based off of labeling, why we pick what we're eating, regardless if it's true or not what's on the labels, but also when we see people eating in a certain way and thinking like, oh, that might be healthy for me because this person's eating in that way. And that's not the case either. Oh, you know, and like figuring out what's healthy for you. Oh, absolutely. Because, yeah, we'll, we'll see like people that we admire that are vegan. And they could be like amazing athletes and have like these completely ripped bodies. And then you try to do it and it fails miserably. Because I think for a lot of people, the vegan thing or even like the keto or even paleo, I think what we do is we go to extremes and, and we don't understand that really the key with eating healthy is meal prep. You got to freaking do it. You got to make a commitment and you got to sit down, figure out what you're going to eat and you got to prep it ahead of time. I mean, I think that's where people fail because I've tried to go vegan and what ends up happening, I mean, it's a lot of work. And then what ends up happening is you start to lean on vegan convenience foods and then Mm -hmm. you're eating a shit ton of soy. And then what happens? Then, well, you get nasty periods and you get moody. Um, at least <laughs> that's what happened to me. Yeah. So, but eating things closest to nature, you know, like Meredith mentioned before, because it, it just, it gets tiring to read labels and be like, I don't know what the hell's in that, you know, and, and I don't know how to pronounce half of it. I probably shouldn't eat it. Um, you know, that's, that's a tough, that's a tough one, but really meal prepping is important and we'll talk about that a little bit later i think one of the big points for this podcast is really for folks to to look at labels a little bit more and be like oh wow you know what's really in Mm -hmm. that food i'm eating and really is it like it might taste amazing because i'm not gonna lie cinnamon toast crunch i will eat the crap out of that you know when i'm in a crappy mood and i'm like screw it i don't care what's in my food but when i read the label i go oh i don't want that you know, but sometimes, you know, we get in those moods. And so it's it's important, I think, to to head off those moods by having lots of good food so that you don't get the drops in, in mood. Yeah. And my mind went to something completely even different than what we're even talking about. What? What? Well, Tell me. Well, for me, I started thinking about when you talk about mood and eating for mood, which doesn't necessarily have anything to do with reading labels or the packaging, but um, thinking about... Uh, slowing down and asking myself why I want to eat what I'm eating when I'm trying to eat it. And then uh, one thing that I've done for my own self, um, back to just trying to keep things simple, because um, I have to keep things as simple as I possibly can for me. So, you know, I eat as many real foods as possible. But um, when it comes down to uh, making a decision between uh, eating something that's like super unhealthy or kind of healthy, 
Um, and I'm on the fence. Sometimes I ask myself why I'm eating that. And then I find different ways to get that need met just in case it's emotional. But sometimes I have to really slow down to realize if it's for emotional eating or not. Because it's right. hard to tell. Because sometimes I actually genuinely think I'm hungry. But if I'm craving sugar, it's like, well, it's probably not hunger. It's more of like, you know, I'm trying to get some other need met. And then I'm like, how can I get that need met instead of eating sugar? Oh, yeah. And for me, it's movement. Oh, for sure. I think movement's key. I think a lot of people, if they could just walk themselves right out of their kitchen and go out the front door and take a mini walk when they feel like they need to raid the kitchen and then come back to it, it's it's remarkable how they'll feel after after they do that. Because, gosh, yeah, I mean, you could dive into all kinds of stuff and then, like, plow through all, like, cereal box done, bag of chips done, and then you're like, I still don't feel satisfied. And then you keep looking for more. And gosh knows I've been there. I mean, speaking of which, oh, chocolate. Yeah. Great segue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look at that label and tell me what you think about the Hershey Simply Five. Well, Simply Five's got me intrigued because uh, it looks different than the other Hershey's packaging. So it would lead me to believe, um, hey, this might be good for me. And it also says non-GMO ingredients. <laughs> oh, non-GMO ingredients. Mm-hmm. So you got to like pay attention here. Yes. Um, Not oh. all of them, just some. And it's <laughs> genuine chocolate flavor. <laughs> It's not even real chocolate. No. <laughs> genuine chocolate flavor. Um, hmm. Yeah. We've got cane sugar. We have organic invert cane syrup. Oh, good. It's organic. That makes me feel better. Well, as long as it's organic, right? No. No, no <laughs> calories if it's organic. And it's got water. We have cocoa. So we have cocoa. Okay. So there is some chocolate. And then natural vanilla flavor. So anything that says natural is like as natural as plastic. It could it could be natural as this cardboard box, mm-hmm. natural as the plastic that this Hershey Simply Five comes in. And really, the reason I bought it was because my husband likes to make his uh, little Sundays, yeah. and I was reading all the labels of everything at our local Safeway store, and that had the the five. It had five ingredients, so I was like, oh, okay, five. Yeah, so I was <laughs> like, okay, there's five ingredients of crap in here versus twenty five in some of the Smuckers and the other brands. So I was like, well, I guess it might be completely synthetic chocolate, but it has less. It has evil. the color of chocolate. So it was like, I guess this will work because he wanted a syrup. And like, I couldn't talk him into like melting some, you know, good chocolate bars. He was like, no, I need the syrup squirt on there. Well, he knows what he wants. Yeah. I'm always looking for silver lining. He knows what he wants. (laughs) And so in this case, like I said, here's me using my like sleuthing out skills of like, okay, what's going to be the least damaging? Mm -hmm. And I go with least amount of ingredients in this case. Less for the gut to have to be like, what the hell is this? What the hell is that? And uh, that brings me back to my thought of uh, my journey with health and fitness, <laughs> which is um, uh, where the health part, the eating part, met me where I was at with every version of me, that I, the extent that I could be honest with myself, right? So when I first started eating healthy, I thought things like this simple five would have been healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, wouldn't, I didn't know any different. And for me at that time, having less than all of the really, you know, just like you said, like 25 different ingredients, like to me having, you know, just five was the best that I could do at that moment. And then as I start eating healthier and I start feeling better, I want to feel even more better. So then I start eating healthier. And then as I'm eating healthier, I start to understand more and more and more about how um, eating really any of this kind of stuff is actually really bad for me. Um, But I guess I just wanted to like highlight, like we're knocking this stuff a lot too, but I've been there where I've eaten this. Yeah. And for me at that time of my life, that was as healthy as I could be to how much I knew about what this type of stuff was doing to my body. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely, yeah. And and that is an appointment. Uh, important. It is an important, important appointment of thought. <laughs> I agree, Janine. Thank you for validating that. Yes. It is no. because, no, I, I, I agree because a lot of times you have to, like, see where you're at and, like, do the steps, like, that you can in that moment to find things that are healthier for you, making healthier swaps, trying to reduce the amount of junk. I mean, maybe you do like Hershey's syrup like my husband. Okay, great. The Simply Five, like I said, I scoured everything. Mm-hmm. So, one and you option. don't know until you know. Exactly. You have no idea. Yeah. Oh, this is a good one. Yeah, like for example, we were looking in my cabinet and I'm like, oh, non-GMO project verified baking powder. Aluminum free at that. <laughs> And so what is the deal with baking powder? And, and why was there things? aluminum in it before? I didn't even know. 
Yeah, aluminum is a stabilizer. I think that's it. I'll verify, but I think that's why aluminum was in the sodium bicarbonate. It's um, also in our deodorants and things too. Oh. And there's a lot of studies that say aluminum's linked to cancer. And so, okay, that's what first got me on this. I was like, all right, I'm gonna get that brand that doesn't have the aluminum. Now, when I look down at non-GMO, I'm like, how does that even make sense? Well, it's because our baking powder has cornstarch in it. And so to get that nice fluffiness we get with the baking powder, the this cornstarch helps with that process. Now, I am no food scientist, so <laughs> no. I'm not going there. But at least I can see that the non-GMO probably comes from the cornstarch since cornstarch is, is part of this. And I think a lot of people who have sensitivities to corn don't even realize that their baking powder can can be causing some randomness there too. I had no idea until this second. But now I know. <laughs> so moving forward, I know. You And you now know. everybody else knows. And now everybody else knows. Rumford brand is the aluminum um, free baking powder because there's some other ones out there that have aluminum. Oh. Mm-hmm. So we have some smooth and nutty. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to say that. These are olives. And the big label on it says Lindsay Naturals. Mm-hmm. And I think what I like to think about on this in terms well, of... Can I'd like to slow ahead. you down, Janine. Yes, it's let me down. more than it just says natural. The font in which the natural is presented in this lovely cursive, it's very soft. When I look at it, it's very inviting. You know, and when I see that word natural and the way in which it's spelled, I believe it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hence marketing. <laughs> Absolutely. And... Oh, and it's hand-picked. Yep, and even the font of the hand picked looks like someone hand wrote it. Very mm-hmm. clever. Marketing is very clever. Very yeah. clever. This one is amazing to me. The other component about it in terms of snacking naturally, on the back of this um, can here, they've got the, non-pro- the non-GMO verified, which is one of the things that I sometimes will look at. And, and by the way, a little science between the non-GMO verified thing here is that there's no genetic modification of the actual olives in their growing process. And olives, of course, grow on trees. So that means they're they're starting from trees all the way up to make sure that there's no genetic modification in the little twigs that turn into trees. So it couldn't be made in a laboratory. It is not a laboratory olive, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, you sometimes wonder. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to talk about the olives, except for my shtick is all about packaging and um, mm-hmm. meeting me where I'm at and not, and as I'm uh, getting healthier, it just, uh, it's easier for me to just stay away from anything in a package. But sometimes I need me some olives. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing. I mean, you you see olives at the store, right? And they're in like, they're like, I'm tripped out by buffet and like serve yourself <laughs> like little spoon things because I've seen kids with their hands oh, yeah. in the olives at like Safeway and different places. It grosses me out. I figure that's what keeps me super healthy oh. is the collective germ pot. No? Yeah. No, I mean, there is something about that. There totally is. I'm somewhat of a germaphobe, so I'm like looking at that and, you know, imagining the kid with his hand in there and going like, okay, I can't do it. But, you know, my sterile can of olives mm-hmm. here, maybe, maybe that changes things. Well, I gotta be yeah. honest. I've never gotten an olive from an olive bar. Yeah, no. No, but what, what were you telling me? The ones in the olive bar are more no, I fresh mean, or something? Supposedly, oh. but the thing is, is I've never seen the labels that go with them, so I don't know. We don't know. Like, it's imaginary. Like, yeah, Whole Foods, of course, they have their whatever they say about it, but I, I don't know. Because mm-hmm. Miss Lindsay here and her <laughs> naturals, I mean, she's telling me we got no artificial flavors, no artificial colors, because I do think that colorings are used to make the olives look pretty. Mm. Because, you know, just regular olives... You know, these are supposed to be black, but they might be slightly brown. Yeah. Okay. But at least they're smooth and nutty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the other thing about this was that, oh, thank goodness they're gluten-free too, everyone. Um, but BPA-free lining. Has anyone heard about that? I haven't. Okay. So when you buy can, canned foods, you do want to take into consideration, and, and this is for folks who do tend to use some some canned goods. And in my perspective, I like to buy beans and cans because... Let's just face it, trying to cook beans, I suck at it, and I have to use my pressure cooker, which is good because that helps with the gut, and I'll use, like, I'll take canned beans and put them in the pressure cooker to cook them more. Okay. Double cook. Double cooking to try to get all those lectins that irritate the gut. And, Um, yeah, and a lot of less work when you get them in the can. Yeah, because, like, have you ever tried to cook beans? They never turn out. No? (laughs) Mine are, like, hard. I'm terrible. Whenever I say I cook, I gotta be honest, my wife is cooking. It's never me. It's never been me. I (laughs) suck at following recipes. Yeah, so, um, well, I'll have to ask my wife. She makes a delicious lentil loaf that I absolutely love. It is 
so good. But I don't know what she does with the lentils or how she makes them. We need to find that out. And we need the, I bet people would like that recipe. Oh so God, we should phenomenal. ask her. Yeah. Very satisfying and nutritious. And it has weight to it. I like to eat food <laughs> that has weight and feels heavy. That's just me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, because I mean, it feels like it's filling your belly because you could eat a whole box of cereal and it's not going to like weigh your belly like they're, no, I don't it know. it just bloats me out. Yeah. It just makes me swollen. <laughs> That's not the kind of weight I'm going for. No. No. Okay, so back to your beans. Yeah, so I got some Gork Bonzos right in front of me in my, and we're back to the Lindsay's. The thing about these two cans is that I have a non-BPA lining oh, little yeah, label that's what on we're there. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Yeah, the BPA lining. This, if, if it's got BPA in it, it, it messes with your hormones, and so I at least try to find oh. my canned goods that say non-BPA lining. And one thing I've noticed with the cleaner that I eat, I'm actually really sensitive to those types of things. Like, I can actually feel um, the difference when I end up having more chemicals in my body. Mm -hmm. When I'm eating not clean for an extended period of time, which I'm kind of in one of those flows right now. I mean, I eat really good Monday through Friday, but I've just been allowing myself to enjoy my summer a little bit too much. Um, But but yeah, when I'm eating super clean, I can really tell when um, I'm putting extra chemicals in my body. Yeah, but what? when I'm not eating clean, and this is the thing that I find interesting, Janine, and I would like your help with this, is that if I'm not eating clean, like let's say I chose to eat my Cinnamon Toast Crunch every day, at first, after eating clean, um, I could feel like lethargic or even agitated. I can tell that my mood is a little different um, as I'm processing all the chemicals, but after a period of time, it's like almost like you get used to that level of being uncomfortable so it doesn't feel like I'm eating anything bad for me anymore Mm -hmm. you know but if I'm eating clean for an extended period of time it's like if the very first bowl of cinnamon toast crunch I'll be like oh my god like I'll I can feel heartburn I can feel like just different pains or it feels like something's trying to scrape out of my stomach like an alien but if I eat it for like a week every day then it's like almost like I I know those same pains are still happening they have to be because I feel it when I'm clean but I don't understand how come after I've eaten it for a long period of time, like I just don't feel the alien wanting to burst out of my stomach anymore, even though it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's crazy that that happens. A lot of people have that same experience. It's like you're almost building a tolerance to it. Oh. And, and so your gut lining, you know, is like, okay, bring in the histamine, like huge hit first off. Then mm-hmm. it's like, oh, she's going to keep putting this in. So it's like a little less. And then that goes on for a while and depends on how many different things you're putting in and then once you know we get to a point where it's compounded so much then the body will kind of overflow like a barrel and we'll get rashes we'll get Um. issues with mood we'll get issues where with can't sleep acid reflux stuffy nose that's another big one waking up with a stuffy nose you can tell when you've had something that your body doesn't like so much yeah and if you listen to this podcast compared to the last one Mm because we just came off of the weekend Mm -hmm. i'm a little congested I might have had some ice cream last night. I did too. <laughs> so I'm a little mucusy. I'm a little mucusy. And I'm okay with that today, but not like every day. No. No, and that's the thing too. Like, you know, when you're thinking about eating healthy, you know, I think a lot of people think that they have to be so strict so that when they happen upon something they really want, it's almost like a binge fest. I've been there. I've done that for sure. Because it's like all or nothing. Yeah. Right? Instead of just a little bit or moderation, living in the middle of the road. You know, I'm learning how to define that for me right now. It's been a journey. Um, But yeah, extremes. I totally get that with extremes and with eating. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I don't think people should, you know, here I am kind of, yeah, I'm making fun of the cereals and things of that nature because I do think people should be eating closest to nature. But do I think that we need to be 100% so strict all the time? No, because unfortunately in our environment, we have so many things that like, oh my God, they're so good. (laughs) And... What the heck? Well, and I like working hard all the time, but sometimes, just sometimes, my brain just is like, I don't want to work so hard. Give me some sugar so you can be happy just for a second. Yeah. Just it's, that five <laughs> seconds of yeah. like, woo! But I know I'm doing it. Yeah. You know? And that's the difference. Before, I didn't know. And then when I'd have the crashes and things like that later, and I didn't understand how much my food was affecting my mood. Now I understand that, so um, I feel like I'm a little bit more in charge or a little bit more behind the wheel. But... Um, but yeah, I don't know why I want to bring that up for anybody that ends up their, their food's affecting their mood and they don't realize it, you know? I think a lot of us don't realize that. And that's a great segue into food journals, which, you know, yeah, there's MyFitnessPal and there's, you know, all, Lose It and all those different apps. But I think having an old school notebook and writing down food, mood, you know, timing of food, I think it's really important because 
I always say, you know, that if you don't have the data, you can't manage the data. And I think for a lot of people to be in touch with mind belly, because we talked about mind muscle last visit when we were hanging out, mind belly is huge. And I don't think a lot of people realize how much that gut really is in control of how you feel upstairs concentration even how you sleep a lot of people have insomnia and oftentimes when i look at what they ate for dinner or how ate late they ate mm. huge factor there yeah. huge huge factor do we want to dive into I, one more fun one i, or do, you got, I think you, you got should to... but janine i have mm-hmm. one last question for you sure so the can back to the bpa just yeah. to bring it kind of a full circle you know that um can opener that you have that opens the whole top mm-hmm. does that make it better for like the stuff on the inside you know the can opener that doesn't yeah that doesn't leave the like sharp edges <laughs> is it just for it's, sharp it has nothing to do with like leaking of uh chemicals no i'm no. doing it just so that there's no sharp edges on it because like this can i'm surprised i bought this Lindsay's naturals because it's one of those ones that you peel back uh-huh. like you i'm scared of those oh, like i've for cut, cutting yeah i've cut my hand really bad on it and i'm surprised i even bought those because yeah usually i'm like oh god i'm gonna hurt myself i've actually went as far as opening the bottom of them before so i didn't have to oh, okay but yeah no there's nothing nothing Many special of chemicals okay mm-hmm. I was just curious. All right. No, and, that's, uh, that's a good question. The most important thing is accidents don't take a vacation. And uh, you're really vigilant about safety. And uh, that's important for health and fitness. Always. Safety yeah. safety in my kitchen. Maybe let's go with this one. Because I think this is an important topic. Mm. We've got some crackers oh, yeah. here. And I think for a lot of people, looking at the label, I want you to read that label, Meredith. And I want you to like look at it and see what, what it makes you think about when you when you look at those crackers. Well, first, they're water crackers. And you want me to tell you what I feel when I look at them? Yeah, like what it feels like to you in terms of like, okay, if you had, if you're in the store and you were looking at crackers and it said water crackers, what's your first you know, thought? Um, water crackers is it's going to be light. It's going to be airy. And the first thing I think of when I look at this package, because it's simple, is that this is going to be okay for me. This mm-hmm. is going to be all right. And it actually, they look kind of gross to me. So I'm like, <laughs> because they don't look appetizing, they're probably going to be healthy. That's what I think when I look at this packaging of these water crackers. That's hilarious. Yeah, no? Well, the good news, well, I think it's the moldy cheese. Is that what I'm I don't like at? the cheese and like the little drop of something weird on it. Or how about this? I've had experience with these types of crackers that are like cardboardy, and I know it's probably probably like fancy like pinky up when you eat them but you know I come from chicken and biscuit you know like I'm first generation off the couch you know what I mean like I'm new to eating healthy so like eating healthy is kind of like I love it it makes me feel good but when it comes to this fancy stuff like I don't know I don't know how to I don't know how to interact with it yeah but it it looks healthy because I wouldn't want to eat it (laughs) yeah well there you go and I think a lot of people think that way too yeah so then I'd probably buy it and be like oh I'm gonna be all right eating this because I didn't want to (laughs) It looks like it's going to taste like cardboard. It yeah, must be healthy. It I must be healthy. It. This will be my good swap. So they're non-GMO verified. They are certified vegan. Oh, and that too. If anything ever says vegan, I automatically assume that it's super healthy for me. Even though I know it's not most of the time. But I'm like, it's vegan. Oh, Yeah, yeah that's mm-hmm. a big one. I think I hear that from a lot of patients about the certified vegan component. Because unfortunately, yeah, we have things like puffy corn-based, like, puffs with like the garbanzo ones i can't remember the name of them hippies or whatever those things are oh, called yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah tasty they give you some mad garlic broth but yeah. those kind of things you know like you, you look at the snack item and you're like yes it's certified vegan um but this does not mean it's always healthy for you especially um, when it comes to vegan like cookies and sweets i'm like oh it's vegan yeah i'm gonna be all right well, and, i mean i know i'm not but it's, yeah it's the funny thing i tell myself the way i can like disassociate and still put something into my body that i know i'm not going to respond well to i know these things now and that's the thing is once you're like aware you can't become unaware you know what i mean it's like it's the matrix like i took the pill that woke me up you know what i mean and it's like sometimes i just want to go back to enjoying that steak like right. in the movie you know what i mean but it's like no i'm awake yeah. oh well yeah, and, and it, I mean, that's a common thing. Like, I have to talk myself into, like, okay, like, I know this isn't, you know, because it's certified vegan. I know it's not, but, you know, it looks good and tasty. And yeah. sometimes you get to go for that. And so I think the, the, the whole big point of this podcast is really choosing things that are, I mean, yes, if you're in the moment you're like, screw it, okay, do that. But if it's going to be a habit, maybe finding one that some item that maybe if it is certified vegan, it has less ingredients. So yeah, it's less, less ingredients, yeah. And this, the beauty of this certified vegan cracker thing I got going on here is it's unbleached wheat flour, olive oil, and sea salt. So three ingredients. Super simple. 
Mm-hmm. And so maybe they taste like cardboard, maybe not. Maybe it's what all about what you put on top of them. I'd be thinking <laughs> about putting a whole bunch of avocado on it, Ooh. and and maybe that would be delicious or some type of nut butter. Yeah, it looks like maybe a spicy jelly would be oh, that's enjoyable. Right, that yeah, is. that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, don't put stinky cheese on it though. Well, oh yeah, here we go. Humble fog cheese with fig spread. That's probably what's on there. It says. Mm. Hmm, I don't know what any of those are. <laughs> I don't fix, I guess. But okay, let's talk about wheat for a minute. Yes. Lay, lay down the wheat. Lay it down. Lay it down on us. <laughs> so I have a whole podcast dedicated to einkorn wheat versus regular wheat and what wheat does to us. Now, this one says unbleached wheat flour. So first and foremost, it's been slightly unrefined. Unbleached doesn't mean that it's been completely unrefined. I mean, this is definitely going to be a refined flour cracker because it's pretty much white um, Mm -hmm. in color. Now, wheat flour, does wheat really affect us? Well, yeah. And does it matter if it's non-GMO or GMO? Mm. And I'm raising my hand. I have a question. Does it? Have, does wheat affect everybody? Because you know, not every is everybody gluten free, and the people or everybody's you know allergic to gluten. But the people that have more of a reaction is just on the spectrum to let us all know. Hey, maybe I shouldn't be eating that too. I'm curious. Okay, that's a that's an awesome question because I don't think that everyone has a gluten sensitivity. Mm-hmm. I think what it is is the amount that we eat, and I think it is the the real problem with the wheat. I think is what we call hybridization. It's, it's a type of grain that we have really a hard time breaking down because they've hybridized our wheat to be able to grow effectively and to be able to harvest it mm. really like high yields. What they do, they put Roundup on it to get the plants to dump all the, the grain. And so, I mean, these are scary things, but this is a true story. And what and what that's doing to the, the earth underneath it as well. That's oh, a whole gosh. other podcast, but keep going. Yeah. I don't want Ground to water, you. all of that. But yeah, so, so we've got this wheat that's hybridized and we've got a bunch of chemicals used in the process of processing and getting it off the plant. Um, and so that's a problem, right? Um, and I think that's more of the issue for people. And, I, and when I t- run tests on food sensitivity, it's not that common that I see people with strict gluten allergies. I'll see simple like sensitivities to it, mm-hmm. but I think it's really the hybridization. Now there's some theories out there and maybe you've heard this in terms of einkorn wheat is better because it's the non-hybridized wheat, which for some people they can tolerate it better. It's absolutely true. I feel like I don't get as bloated. I still get bloated, but I feel like I don't get as bloated. Mm-hmm. Now there's another type of, of concept out there with the sourdough bread and being fermenting it just right so that your body can break down that gluten better or in some cases folks will say that the the sourdough has um the process of the fermentation of the sourdough breaks down the gluten molecules so it's easier to digest i have tested it there's one place in seattle up by pike market that has supposedly this really great bread i've not tried it yet but a couple patients of mine who had gluten sensitivities Uh said that they did okay with it and they just ate the bread simple with a little butter. And, and it doesn't it say it's gluten-free. It's just how they made it or how... Yes. yes. Okay. And that yeah. process. Ah, so the process... Of how you ferment the sourdough. Not like your conventional sourdough, folks. Like if you just buy a loaf of sourdough that like, you know, Sara Lee made. No. And then real quick, all this is just because we want sourdough, not because we need sourdough. No, no. (laughs) Yeah, and I mean, some people are arguing that the fermentation with the gut bugs and all that, you know, it helps. It's one of your fermented foods. But really, if we're looking at fermented foods and you want to get your beneficial bacteria from a fermented food, I'm I'm hands down sauerkraut. And I don't recommend kombucha. I don't think it's strong enough. But sauerkraut can be. And like you could have like a tablespoon a day to kind of work on building up your tolerance to yeah. it. Because some people get kind of gassy with it. Uh-huh. But that's more of the way I'd be looking at it. I don't 100% put a lot of weight in the sourdough breads. Because it's still, you know, for me it's like, okay, what kind of wheat flour did they use? If they used einkorn wheat flour that's, you know, non-hybridized. And they did the sourdough method, that might be better. But... Hmm. Who knows? And all this came about understanding wheat written on the back of the label. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about this. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's just looking at, you're looking at it and you're going, okay, unbleached wheat flour. You know, what you would want to be looking for, for like the cleanest wheat flour, you'd be wanting Uh to look for unbleached, like organic, unbleached. And usually if it's organic, it's going to be unbleached, but sometimes they have to add that wording in just for fun. Whole grain wheat flour, um, because this does not say whole grain. So it's been, it's been um, processed. If you heard that grunt in the background, I think Bear. I feel like he was talking to you. My dog has decided that he doesn't want to hear anymore about wheat flour. But, you know, 
it, if I had to choose crackers, like say I had a box of wheat thins next to me, and I had oh, a no. box of <laughs> oh, we have pasta down. If we had like a box of these club original crackers by Keebler, you know, when you're looking at the labels, this club cracker, we've got enriched flour, we've got soybean oil, we've got sugar, we've got high fructose corn syrup, and then we've got corn syrup, we have soy lecithin, and then there's some leavening agents like baking soda and stuff like that. So when I'm looking at that, I'm going, huh, there's a lot of ingredients in those crackers. And so if you want a cracker that's mostly, and most crackers out there are going to be made of wheat flour, I'd be choosing this one over here, my water crackers, and coming up with something good to, to dip them with. So we were joking earlier, but it tends to work out a little bit, where picking the packaging that has all these like things that want to tell you that it's healthy, like it's yeah. vegan, it's non-GMO, it's, you know, and even the packaging was a little boring, and it says it's, you know, natural versus the uh, Keebler, which has nothing on it to even trick us at all. It just says it's light and flaky and buttery. <laughs> so in this case, picking the, the packaging that has all that, those gimmicky things that I joke about is the better option. I mean, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's the crazy thing about marketing. Keebler's mm-hmm. like, we don't care. Mm-hmm. They're like, but we, I like that they're not lying to me. Yeah. No, they're not lying whatsoever. There is no, like, gimmick whatsoever in in this box. They're just like, here we are. We got wheat and soy. <laughs> yeah. Boom. And, and that's nice. I'm not going nice. to try to trick you with like a, a nice natural scene of like trees behind it for me to think, ooh, I want to go to that, those natural healthy trees. No, not at all. Nope, that elf's just like, this is what we got. Yeah. That's nice of him. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. So yeah, you know, that's kind of one of the ways in which they're staying true to their labeling. We'll, we'll give Keebler and the, uh, I think it's owned by Kellogg, that those guys some some props what do we got here we got some greens some uh buckwheat quinoa and millet um grains i got this at whole foods it's a combo so for me anytime anything says it has quinoa in it mm-hmm. i'm just like that's good for me <laughs> <laughs> better than rice and it's the closest to nature you know form this is just a bag of super grains as it as it is, and so there's no spice packet. Mm. You know how sp- spice packets work, right? Tell me, tell me what a spice packet is. Oh, you mean like in the top ramen and stuff like right. that, with like those little silver bags that have all that stuff in it? Yeah, okay. Those little magical mm-hmm. packets of what? Yeah, it's usually preservatives and junk. Yeah, natural that are they'll say natural flavors, which could be up to like a hundred flavors that are synthetically made. And I'm glad that there's preservatives in them. Yeah, the reason being, which I will share with you when we go off the air, <laughs> so that your top ramen lasts in case of like, do you have it in your like basement, uh, you know, bomb shelter? Yeah, you know, like just in case you want to flavor your uh, bugs, you know, like once the apocalypse hits. Hey, you know, we should always be thinking ahead. That would yeah. be where I would think. <laughs> yeah. It's going to become currency. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, one of the other big things, I think, for a lot of people, they'll see the 365 um, organic brand of Whole Foods. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like if this was a bag of chips. Oh, yeah, I would think it's healthy. Right. <laughs> but unfortunately, folks, um, just because it's a Whole Foods product and it's their uh, organic line, if it's chips, they're still chips. They're still junk food. But so just minus a day. So it's not 365. That one day you <laughs> ate not healthy. <laughs> 364. 364. And you know what? It's probably going to have better ingredients than some of your conventional yeah, chips out there. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, just keeping in mind that, you know, those are not health foods. That was just weird. Yeah. Do that one. I don't know. I just picked that one up. So anyway, we've kind of went through the basics in, in all of my food here. And, and I'm kind of looking around at, at what we've got in front of us. And I think one of my last things that I just want to state about things in the universe is that I don't understand why there's not that many ketchups out there that don't have high fructose corn syrup and why they're so expensive I'm curious. That's what I'd like to know. Oh, why ketchup is so expensive? Yeah, and <laughs> why, and why they just can't not put high fructose corn syrup in it? And all of like we've got, we have high fructose corn syrup, and then we have corn syrup again. Why do you have it in there twice? And then why do you have natural flavors? Like, do you already have onion and garlic powder in there? So many things. I don't know how to talk about ketchup. 
I don't know what to say about ketchup. I it, think it's one of my pet peeves. I wish we had the option of the, um, if I ever do get ketchup, um, since we're throwing our partners under the bus, my wife uh, <laughs> loves her ketchup. <laughs> and um, uh, we always get the organic, natural, like Annie's. Mm-hmm. But I've never, at least not off the top of my head, I don't remember like what the sugar or fructose or any of that is on the back of that container. But I get it over the one that you have there because it says it's organic and like non-GMO and also the packaging, um, there's cursive on it. So if there's cursive on it, then it's, um, it's gotta be natural, <laughs> natural and healthy, you know, cause if they're taking the time to use the font of cursive, I mean, that means like you gotta be able to read it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, so if I'm smart enough to read the bottle, maybe it's healthy. I don't know. See, and, and that's like one of those pitfalls, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, like Annie's, um, as far as I know, they don't have high fructose corn syrup, but it's, it's, it's just sugar in there. But like most of your brands of ketchup have some form of sugar. Sure. Cause it won't. Ketchup's supposed sweet. to be sweet. You know, a sour ketchup would be weird. And a spicy would ketchup it? is like... <laughs> now that we're going there, would it? I don't know. I love me a spicy thing. I yeah. love spicy pickles. Hmm. So I don't know why that would mean I like spicy ketchup. But I think um, we're having a Shark Tank moment and um, we should make some spicy ketchup and see what we think. I think so. We should probably come up with that. Because I know that they have sriracha ketchup. Oh, but... so it's not an original thought. <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> Dang yeah, it. but half the sriracha stuff, those labels have high fructose corn syrup in it, too. Oh. I didn't grab our sriracha. I should have grabbed mm-hmm. the sriracha. Um, but, yeah, I, and, and really, why am I why am I harping on high fructose corn syrup? I mean, most of us know that it boosts the blood sugar, but it's also, mm-hmm. like, the research shows it's almost like crack for us. Yes. We get it in, and it's so sweet that we need more. And that's why you, my husband, not you, um, my husband could use, like, a half a bottle of ketchup in an evening because... It's so sweet. And he's like, I want more. I was going to say, because, yeah, never mind. <laughs> because he likes ketchup. Yeah, I like ketchup as well. It's one of those all American things that, like, man. Well, really, my mind is going back to sugar and being addicted to it, like drugs, and how that's really upsetting to me. Like, yeah. the, that our bodies react to our foods, like, the same way that we do, like, with addiction. And um, it's, it's kind of frightening. You know, not frightening, that's the wrong way to put it, but um, but it makes it very difficult for us as we're trying to be healthy, and for me, when I'm trying to be my best, when I'm fighting against my body's natural genetic response to become addicted to it, mm-hmm. you know, and then I have to be aware enough to remove myself from those items in which I'm becoming addicted to, which is very challenging, and if you're not aware, it could be very uncomfortable when you're going through essentially withdrawal system withdrawal symptoms with your food but not being able to pinpoint it because if you're not an addict you know what I mean like if you're just a normal person you know which no I've seen it because okay let me use my case in point going back to the ketchup for a minute like I'm like I'm sure I'm not gonna eat sugar I'm not gonna eat junk food and then I catch myself putting a crap ton of ketchup on Mm. eggs and I'm like what am I doing? Oh, I'm getting my sugar right there. Hello. Yeah. And I think a lot of people do that. Like, there's condiments that have that sugar. Like, a lot of people, you know, let's bring out the honey for a minute. Mm. Honey. It's a natural form of sugar, right? Like, 100% maple syrup. It's closer to nature than, you know, your refined cane um, sugar. Now, granted, if you have straight up cane sugar, which, you know, if you have, like, the full cane just straight out in front of you and you chewed on it, well, that would be closest to nature, so won't won't knock on that. But a lot of people will will put a ton of honey or a ton of maple syrup on things, and they're trying to do, you know, when they're trying to do the low sugar. And, And it's one of those pitfalls that we get into because we're trying so hard to, like, move ourselves out of one thing and then fall into another. And so that's why it's really important and not to... not being aware of it. Yeah. That's the hardest part. Like, our bodies are such a huge chemistry, biology experiment going on that's so individual to each one of us. Oh, did you fart, puppy? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's just, uh, it can... I got distracted by the dog fart. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. No, it's it's a natural response. I get, I get you. It's a natural response to, like, take one addiction and try to weasel in something else like I've found myself going like okay um you know I'm not gonna eat sugar but then I'll find like peanut butter Mm -hmm. has a sweetness to it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll be covering up with that and all of a sudden I've ate a half of a jar of peanut butter or have you ever done this I I've done this where I'm not eating as many carbs but I'll eat like half a watermelon yeah and all it is is carbs like oh I'm not eating as many carbs I'm you know watching my carbs and then I'll eat half a watermelon without even thinking about it Mm -hmm. no I've totally done that watermelon and um god cherries Mm -hmm. 
berries, berries. Watermelon, though, I mean, you pee it out there pretty fast. I mean, it's, it's a great hydrator. It's a lot of vitamin C. Thank you for making me feel okay about that life choice, Janine. <laughs> So I think, you know, there's, there's lots of, I'm glad I, I'm glad I helped you yeah, with that for, life choice. Yeah. I mean, we can, we could talk for hours on all of this stuff. And, and I think really just the big point that, that Meredith and I wanted to really get across today to everyone is that, you know what, it's important to look at labels and be conscious of what you're putting in your mouth and also give yourself some grace to have the days where you're like, screw it, I'm going to eat whatever I want, but pay attention to how you feel. And then that way you can always kind of weigh it out for yourself in terms of risk versus benefit ratio. You know, if you want your cinnamon toast crunch with all of its goodness and you might feel like crap for like the next day, is it worth it? And in some cases, yeah. Why not? Um, you and know, times it's not. Yeah. And then I like to water the hope of not beating yourselves up if um, you've been eating, eating for a certain way for an extended period of time and then didn't know how unhealthy it was. Because that's how I've lived a lot of my life. I don't know until I know. And then when I know, more is revealed. And more is revealed when I'm ready to hear it based off of how I'm living my life today. But the trick is, is not beating myself up for where I'm at today. Because like where I'm at today, I'm, I'm my best and my worst, right? Mm-hmm. And so I guess I just want everybody to feel really helpful too about wherever you're at, that's where you're at. And then, you know, and, and then moving forward, make different choices, you yeah. know, but not, not beating yourself up. I, if I beat myself up, which I do a lot, I'm sounding really cheerful right now, but I beat myself <laughs> up a lot for like not knowing and thinking about how much time was wasted or whatever. But then I have those other aha, aha moments of like, well, no, everything took what it took for me to be who I am today. It, every every step I took, every wrong direction, every every extra donut or every whatever, you know, but it, it, it took what it took for me to develop the understanding to unveil to me who I am today. And I wouldn't want to be any different than the moment that I'm in in this exact second. You know, so boom. I couldn't even say that any better. So with that being said, you have survived another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Jeanine Kraus, with my sidekick. Woo-woo. Meredith Beard. And so I'm going to put in my notes all of the different items we talked about today and the better choices compared to what we rattled off. And just for all the companies that might hear this out there, if you work for any of these companies, I'm sorry. I'm just saying it like it is. And uh, that's that's all I got to say. And I got to say, I didn't, I've never really been on podcasts before, so I apologize for the etiquette, Janine. If I uh, <laughs> did something that was a faux pas in terms of stating um, brand names. I don't know. So that's no. my bad. No, and, I'm throwing it out there with the right. brand names. We're all good. Okay, We're cool. all good. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. Thanks for tuning in to The Health Fix, the podcast all about taking control of your health, rebelling against aging, and having fun every day. A lot of patients ask me, do you think I'm aging too fast? So, I created an evaluation checklist for you to see for yourself. Plus, I created a resource guide to help you slow down the aging process right now. You can find it for free on my website, drjkrausnd.com. If you like this podcast, help get the word out to others by liking it and rating it. If you'd like more natural health tips and want to join our Facebook community where I interact daily, click on the Join Group button on our website at drjkrausnd.com.